Hello, good morning. I just wanted to test this out and see how the sound is and see how it works because we are going to Rhinebeck today. Good morning. Okay, so we are walking to the train station. Good morning. Um, we are walking uh, from my apartment down to the train station to go to Rhinebeck. I'm taking you along with me today and I am using some new uh, camera equipment to hold my camera. <laughs> so I feel like you're going to see um, hopefully an improvement throughout the day as I learn how to use this thing. Um, but anyway, so today I'm going solo. Rebecca just let me know she's on her way to the airport, so she is headed home. Um, so I am going on my own today, but I'm hoping that I will be able to show you so many things at Rhinebeck now that I've been for one day and I have more of a sense of what's there. So I am very excited to show you that, but this starts with the train. So we're here in Manhattan walking to Penn Station, actually across the street to the train hall, and then we're going to take the Amtrak train all the way up to Rhinebeck. Each morning over Rhinebeck weekend, I woke up at about 5 a.m. to get ready for the day. I made sure to have my backpack ready with essentials like snacks, water, a portable charger, and of course, knitting projects. I also laid out my outfit for each day so it was easier to get dressed so early. Around 6 a.m., I'd head out the door. The walk from our apartment to Penn Station on 33rd and 8th takes about a half hour. A nice walk in the morning is honestly a great way to wake up. And as you can see, there are lots of cars and people already up and moving. Right on top of Penn Station is Madison Square Garden, where the Knicks and Rangers play and tons of concerts happen every year. On Saturday night when Rebecca and I got home, people were lined up for the Harry Styles concert. Then across from Penn Station is the Moynihan Train Hall, where the Long Island Railroad and Amtrak trains board. This train station is super nice and clean. It's big and bright and has lots of restrooms and a Starbucks. And here's a New York City tip. If you're ever visiting and need to find a public restroom, look for a bus or train station. They aren't always the nicest, but it's better than being stuck without one. This train station also has a waiting area for ticketed travelers. So some are spacious to sit, relax, and charge your devices before you travel. I also noticed that they had Wi-Fi if you need to work. I brought myself some breakfast from home and arrived early enough to sit and eat, so I had my bagel and coffee in the waiting area. About 20 minutes before our train was scheduled to leave, people line up at the assigned track. Then you take the escalator down to the train tracks to board. Something that I learned after the first train ride was that you want to sit on the left side of the train going up to Rhinecliff and then on the right side coming back to New York City. This way, you're always on the side of the train that looks over the Hudson River, which is a beautiful sight to see. This Amtrak train at least was comfortable. I can't say that all of them are like this, but the seats are bigger than airplane seats and the bathrooms are bigger too. There's even a car with a cafe, though it's not open for all trips or the whole time. And I never made it back to the cafe car because I brought my own snacks. 
Since I was traveling solo on this day, I brought my iPad with several movies downloaded from Netflix. The train does have Wi-Fi, but it's not strong enough to stream movies. About two hours later, we have arrived at Rhinecliff Station. This station is way different than the train hall at Penn Station. It has one waiting area with wooden benches, a bathroom, and a few vending machines. It's so quaint and cute. The most difficult thing about coming into Rhinecliff Station is leaving because it was super challenging to get a lift out of there. On the first day, we didn't have any issues. On the second day, it took us about five to 10 minutes to just get a requested ride. And then on the third day, I couldn't get a ride at all. So I ran up to a taxi driver that was there and begged him to come back after his first ride to the fairgrounds because that's where everyone was going. I made friends with three other knitters and we banded together for the taxi ride, which is only 10 minutes from the train station. The scenery up here is beautiful. It was perfectly fall-like. I wanted to chat for a second before I go in. You can see maybe in a second, it's really empty today. People are starting to come in, um, but yesterday there was a long line just to get in. I think I'm getting here 30 minutes after things have opened. So I'm about to head inside and the first thing we're gonna do is go for an apple cider donut again, because it was really good. But I also heard that we need to try apple cider. So that's what I'm gonna try to do first. I'm gonna probably eat lots of food today and maybe even shop for some stuff. So let's head in. We're headed in through one of the several gates to the fairgrounds. This one puts us right at all of the food. Our first stop is apple cider donuts, so we're going to take the first right up this hill to the stand. And even though the line looks pretty long, it goes fast. And this is the shortest it will be all day. Now the donuts are good, but definitely better when they come out hot, which you cannot predict. And the cider was pretty good too. It was piping hot, which I love. Now we're starting to head through the various buildings of the fairgrounds. These first few are larger buildings that are near the food. There are various booths from yarn to fiber and all kinds of accessories. Everything was on a map that was handed out when you entered the fairgrounds and all the buildings and barns are numbered. This booth is Miss Babs, who is out of Tennessee. She has a special show color every year that people were practically clawing to get. I heard that there's a limit of two per purchase, and it seems like the show coordinators have intentionally put her on the end cap to manage traffic flow. Up ahead is the legendary hill where people meet up. It's empty now, but on Saturday, it was packed with people eating, talking, and meeting their favorite knitting celebrities. A big part of the festival is the animals. We'll see the sheep and other farm animals later, but there were also kangaroos, monkeys, and a pig. We stumbled upon a sheep to shawl competition where groups of spinners and weavers were carding fiber, spinning it up, and then weaving it into a shawl. Every day there was a parade of animals and it was so adorable. I'll leave the sound on so you can hear the bells and the people sounds. 
Excuse us. Hey, stop. Yeah, the best life deserves that. <laughs> I wonder if they have anything on us today. Oh, do they have that? They do usually. Oh, that's cool. Now this is what the barns look like. The barns are smaller than the other buildings where we started and have a concrete path only in the middle. The vendors did a great job making their booths feel super homey. You have no idea that you're in a barn. So here's a part of the festival that I didn't think I would enjoy so much. It's the animals. There were so many kinds of sheep as well as alpacas, llamas, and goats. Some of the sheep liked being pet, and their coats felt softer than yarn. This right here is an Angora bunny. She was super soft and just lay there letting people pet her. I tried my best to capture a lot of the different types of sheep so you can see how they all look so different. This little guy was wearing a top hat and then he got an itch that he had to scratch. He kind of reminded me of Toaster. As the day went on, more people arrived, but it never got super crowded on Sunday like it did on Saturday. A few of the vendors had outdoor tents like Jenny the Potter, who is a well-known potter, and I wanted to make sure I saw her booth. Another potter I love is Polly Studios. I have several of their mugs and they are so great because they're dishwasher safe and microwave safe. I find them always at DFW Fiberfest, but you can also shop them online. For as many buildings as there were to shop in and as many booths as there were, all I bought my two days at Rhinebeck was a t-shirt. <laughs> in some ways I was surprised, but I guess my minimal yarn stash is still in business. Another famous food from Rhinebeck is the falafel. People will stand in this super long line just to get some. I decided to try the crab mac and cheese, which was pretty tasty, but then I saw these people coming out with amazing looking Brussels sprouts, so I also had to grab those, and they were delicious. Fast forward a few hours and it was almost time to go. I really wanted to try this cookie stand and to get a coffee. Now the brownie treat was awesome, but the cookie I got was just not for me. I'm majorly picky about my desserts because if I'm going to eat something unhealthy, it better be worth it. This spot is a hidden gem at Rhinebeck. It's actually right in the middle of things, so people are constantly walking in front of it, which weirdly makes it easy to miss. It's just behind the big stand that serves fair food and right next to the hill. Vanessa and Wendy and I met up and decided to sit and knit for a few minutes and enjoy the quietness of Sunday. but announcements keep coming on. So I'm in the train station, super cute. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, but I just wanted to say that today was so much fun and I didn't get to show off my sweater yet. So here is my butter swatch sweater and it was so comfy and I love it. I've got notes on this on my Ravelry, but I used the Bella app to design it and it turned out great. And the weather was perfect today. It was a very chill day, I did some knitting. So I'm at the train station a little early because I didn't realize that Ryan Beck ended at four o'clock. So here I am and I'm gonna hang out for like an hour, knit and drink my coffee and then get on the train, knit some more, watch a movie, and just end the day really relaxing and take some time tomorrow to just chill. So 
Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out all the other Rhinebeck videos. They'll be linked down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.